Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Let's Draw with BJ Dell. I'm your host, BJ Dell, and in today's new Let's Draw video, I'm going to walk you through the process from start to finish of how you can draw a cartoon character in a really cool dynamic action pose using this cartoon karate hippopotamus as our character design. I'm going to show you how to use basic shapes to start forming the character, how you can combine these to really start fleshing out the overall pose, and how you can make it more dynamic. So if you want to learn all about that and more, keep watching. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the video. As always, I'm using the iPad Pro. This is a Gen 4 2020 model, 12.9 inch. The pencil is the Apple Gen 2 pencil. The app is Procreate. The brush that I'm using is my standard anchor. This is part of my cartooning brush set, which is available on Gumroad. I'll link that in the description below. Then the canvas is a 4,000 pixel by 4,000 pixel 300 DPI canvas. But honestly, this tutorial is all about the foundations of doing a dynamic cartoon pose. So no digital really required for this. If you want to follow along with a piece of paper and a pencil, you're more than welcome. So let's jump into it. Like I've talked about before, the kind of keys to starting out with cartooning and getting an idea out of your head and onto paper is just start with really basic shapes. That's how I start all of my designs just really basic shapes make up my design so you'll see starting out with a kind of circle here and a squared rectangle here for this character design i'm going to do a hippo i can see it already that's what i'm going to do kind of see got a snout here kind of coming up into the head if we kind of follow this along here you can kind of see how those connect as well i'm going to drop the opacity of this so it doesn't look as bright maybe a little bit more sketchy there we go so we've got this hippo's head let me shrink this down just a tad bit and move it over here so next thing i want to do is the body so you'll see here once again just really basic shapes an oval here and a bigger oval down here so we've got this kind of curve to this body going on which i really like shrink this down one more time make it a little bit smaller here uh, so you can kind of see this line of motion already right here. This is going to be a really fun dynamic pose. I'm not sure what's going to go on next with this. I know with hippos and having a pose like this, uh, I think the most, cl the most cliche thing you can do is kind of go the ballerina route because of Fantasia. Uh, but I think I want to do something a little bit different. So looking at this and the way this is coming out, if I do another circle here or oval, for the leg that would mean another leg has to be over here which looks really weird i don't know if he's doing maybe a hula dance so i could do a hula dancer or i could also i can kind of see maybe a leg coming out here and i think this is what i'm going to do because i can see it already kind of see the karate kid crane kick look going on right here i don't know if you can see it or not I think that's exactly what I see. And you can kind of tell too, the way that this is curving, the way I drew that leg, you can kind of see almost this three quarters perspective going on here. I think with the head though, I don't really want that three quarters perspective. I want this kind of looking straight at you. So he's in this pose, he's looking dead straight at you saying it's going down. Uh, so I think that works better. I can kind of connect these as they come around though. And you can kind of see this almost like jelly bean, weird shape, lima bean almost shape that this takes. That's going to be the body coming down into the belly, into the, the back hind leg there. And then this crane kick leg up in the air, ready to take on the next competitor. I think it's going to work out pretty well. So let's go ahead and draw this arm in here. So we've got a pretty big oval here once again you can see the way that this center line comes down it's going to be that three quarters perspective so anything that falls on the left hand side of this is going to be bigger than on the right because that's going to kind of roll back into the distance so this arm here is going to be bigger than the one on this side and as this comes down it kind of got the shoulder coming out of the snout here into this right here is where they're going to connect so the next oval to that oval. So that's going to be kind of the elbow right there at that line. So we'll bring in another oval over here. And you'll see as I'm doing this, I'm just going really loose with these shapes. You'll see I'm not actually using my wrist. I'm using my entire arm as it comes around. I know you can't see clear up, but I'm using my arm clear up to my shoulder. It's this huge sweeping motion. So as you sketch, as you start to lay out your ideas, I would really recommend getting away from just using, you know, short little motions with your wrist and doing everything right here. 
really get into it. Use your whole arm to get these really nice, big swooping motions. It's gonna make your sketches have more life to them. It's gonna make everything look more dynamic. It's gonna be more organic as well. It's just gonna have a better look and you're gonna get a better feel out of it. So give it a try, I promise. You'll see results with it. It's super fun to do as well. And then we'll draw another oval here. So it's gonna be kind of like where that arm comes up into that stance. Cause you gotta have the crane kick stance for the arms as well. And then we'll draw another oval back here. Once again, this is in that three quarters though. So you're not gonna be able to see this kind of upper portion with that shoulder and that upper arm here. So it's kind of gonna just be this bottom one, almost at an angle here coming up into just another oval here for that. You can call it a hand or a hoof, I guess. Would it be in a hippo? <laughs> so there we go. So we got that back arm in there. This shoulder is going to be kind of hidden by the face here, or the snout. So let's go ahead and knock in the teeth here. So we got those in there. The snout, we'll go ahead and throw the kind of nostrils here off to the sides. It's going to come up into the head here. So let's do a really big eye here. eye over here and I think that's maybe gonna look a little too goofy for it being a karate pose I think keeping the one eye big might look cool but what if over here instead of doing that we do this one kind of at that kind of mean like angled look I think that might look a little better I kind of like this decision too of having it like straight facing you instead of going on that three quarters perspective. So he's really kind of mean mugging you and saying, come at me, bro, type of thing. I think that's cool. I like that. Let's give him some brows around here then. Kind of bring those in. And then with the head, I don't think it really looks karate enough uh, just because with kind of the weight of the hippopotamus, I don't want to throw on a karate outfit or a gi because I want to kind of show off some of these kind of fat rolls and creases that I want to do around the body. So I don't think that is necessarily the best. So I think maybe if we bring up this head a little bit more and give him this kind of bandana uh, head wrap thing here. And then kind of pull this off to the side and have like that coming out here with the ends kind of have that flowing out too kind of gives a, a really cool look i think that kind of looks a little bit more karate-esque so there we go that's kind of the overall shape and form uh that the sketch is going to take now looking at this i know this looks really super rough if you are new to the channel you probably look at this and think what's this guy doing can he draw or not uh, but that's really what I urge you guys to do is not worry about your initial sketch. Just go for it, you know, block in this stuff so you can start seeing it and then you can go and fine tune stuff later. So this is the point where I think a lot of people would probably jump into doing the inking process. Uh, however, there's another option here and this is something I use quite a bit. If I go too loose on the initial sketch stage, if I'm not really sure what I'm going with yet, if I wanna fine tune it a little bit more, I'll do a second sketch stage. And I think that's what we're gonna do in this video. So if you're following along with digital, let's go ahead and make a new layer, and then we're gonna drop the opacity of this layer. So we're gonna draw on top of here with a new sketch layer. Uh, if you're using just traditional at home, using a piece of paper and a pencil, you can always just draw harder in this next section over top of the line work that you already did. Or if you want to grab a second piece of paper, throw it into a light box. If you've got that, put it on top of there or even just a window, you know, put one piece on top of the other piece. When it's bright outside, you could always do that as well to kind of be able to see a little bit better. Uh, so the one thing just looking at this though, we forgot his ears. He looks really weird without ears. I'm like, this guy kind of looks like a dinosaur, but uh, once we get the ears in, I think, yeah, this is gonna look a little bit better. Just looking at that, I'm like, wow, something's missing. Those look a little too big. I think I need to do them a little bit smaller. I'm a little too crazy with those. So let's go ahead and get that one in there. There we go, that looks a lot more hippopotamus-esque. So there we go. So let's go ahead and kind of fine tune this now. So once again, on this new layer here, just gonna go in and darken everything up. So we'll start here, get the eyes. I start 
at the eyes quite a bit in my work. It's really up to you where you want to start. There's no right or wrong answer as far as that goes. Wherever you feel comfortable jumping off at. So for some reason, I always seem to start with the eyes. So we get those in there. And once again, this is just a sketch layer. So as you're going through here and kind of fine tuning stuff, just realize you're going to go back over this stuff again with inks here in a little bit. So you don't have to worry about making everything perfect. You're going to do a lot of changes in between now and the final thing. So just remember, this is still kind of that uh, idea phase. You can kind of you know, fine tune stuff later as you go along. And you'll see here too, I'm gonna to start adding in just like extra creases and lines just to kind of start building everything out and adding just some more details as I go along. So that's why sometimes I do this extra sketch stage if I wanna feel a little bit more confident in what I'm gonna be inking. I'll just use this as the, the time where I start to kind of fine tune everything, so. Like I said, this isn't necessary. If you don't want to do this, if you want to hop straight into inking, if you feel pretty confident with your line work and you can see what's going on, definitely feel free to do whatever works best with kind of your flow of work. So this one's going to be a little bit overlapped here at this ear and this piece. So I think I'm going to draw these out first. Get those in and where they go and then go back in and decide where that ear is going to go after these are kind of positioned in the correct spot. There we go. I think that looks a little bit better. It's a little bit muddled back there, but I think once we go in with the, the colors, we can really kind of decide and, and bring that home and show exactly what's going on there. It's not going to look as kind of busy. So let's bring this. Do we decide what that's called? A paw or hoof on this? Bring that around, you'll see adding in some extra stuff like that. So we've got these kind of little extra creases and curves there to kind of show the fat where that is, kind of the rolls here coming up too from the, the boob there. And we'll bring this one down. It's gonna kind of be the knee right here into that hoof. And you can kind of see just the weight there is really apparent just because there's a lot here as far as the kind of thigh goes. There's not a lot as far as the bottom calf region and that bottom where it goes into the foot. And that's kind of one trick that you can use with cartooning is if you're using heavyweight characters and you want to show that they're kind of top heavy, that they're definitely more plump. You can kind of use this trick to making a, a thicker thigh coming down into just kind of almost dropping into that foot and it makes it look like it's a, a lot heavier set than what it is if you start to kind of draw everything out perfectly. So we'll draw that in there. You can see I'm kind of adding those as I go, just little pieces here and there that I see that can really add to the design is what I'm looking for here. And once again, I can change it later on once I go in to actually you know, start to ink it. This is just more, like I said, once again, just still that brainstorming session just getting everything out of my head and onto paper and seeing what works and what doesn't. So once again, this uh, back one's gonna be smaller, so we wanna make sure that that one's not as big as this front one. Draw a little belly button there. And oh, I forgot the ears, I also forgot a tail. Can't forget the tail. Let's get that in there. So, all right, there we go. So that's basically a, a sketch tutorial shows you here. As you remember, we just used some really basic shapes. You can see really now how messy those are once I turn the opacity all the way up. Uh, so just really basic shapes to help us build the foundations. And then going back in here, just kind of cleaning stuff up, making it look a little bit better. And we're ready for the inking process, which is gonna be what the next video is about. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you like today's video too, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. New videos like the follow-ups to this video. So today's was sketching. The next one is going to be inking the same hippopotamus. And then the third is going to be coloring it, adding highlights and shadows. So don't miss out on that. As for me, I can be found online at bjdell.com as well as on Instagram and Twitter at bjdell. If you guys haven't joined yet to hop on over to 
Facebook after this video. Join the group. Keep creating a Learn, Draw, Share art community over there. I'll link it in the description below. Place where you can meet cool artists, share your artwork, give feedback, get feedback. It's awesome, and we want you guys to join, so don't miss out. Also, I have a new podcast called Make Money With Your Art. You can find it wherever you listen to podcasts at. Definitely check it out. I'll link it in the description below as well. But if you're thinking about using art and your passion is something that you want to turn into a side hustle to make money or actually into a possible career that you can do full time, definitely check it out. I'll give you a bunch of hints and tricks that I've learned along the way, and hopefully you can learn something. So that's it for me. And until next time, keep creating it.